Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our third episode of the podcast. This is super duper cool. This feels very natural. It's starting to feel like something I actually really enjoy doing, and I want to be here every single time I get to film one. So hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for sitting with me. Thank you for watching me. This is super duper cool. And today I'm really excited to talk about the time that I left social media for probably over a year. It's really funny when I talk about this topic with literally anybody just because of the fact that whenever it comes up people think it's like I went to war like they were like was that okay for you like are you doing okay now how was that for your mental health like what was that like must have been tough must have been a really hard time what like to just imagine that some people and people in general feel so taken back hearing that anybody's not on social media or that you choose to take a leave from social media it's like we're clearly going down the damn tubes like how is our society so surprised by that I don't know so Let's just start off by talking about what my relationship with social media was like before I decided to take this big crazy leap and leave social media, which is like, again, it was so overdue for me. I was so ready to leave. And I think if any of you guys are listening specifically to this episode, you also are in either the same boat where maybe you're thinking about leaving or you also took a leave and maybe you're kind of on the same boat as I am now. And I really think that through this experience, it has completely, completely changed the way that I view social media as a whole. It's like instead of it being this entertainment piece and this thing that is so dire and important to me and that I care what really anybody thinks, that's all gone. That's all gone, I don't feel that way anymore. So besides all that, let's just hop in. So I have no idea how you listening or watching this know me. Um, I don't know if you used to follow my old YouTube channel, which if you, that's, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Thanks for being here the entire time through my ups and my downs and all my different identity crises. Like I appreciate you and I couldn't love you more. But if you're brand new, you might not know much about my background story or anything at all. And I think even people who have found me through the years don't know my freaking origin story bro i have been on social media since i was 17 years old this was only like like no i'm not kidding like hold on i'll get into it but this is so weird when i think about it instagram came out when i was like 16 in high school so like this was only maybe a year after instagram came out i was starting to make youtube videos and i was just virtually obsessed with youtube just as all of us were if you're my age and you're like in your mid-20s we all remember the early days of youtube the trisha the shane dawson the like the whole enchilada like where you just it was great like it was just such a fun space to be in and it was so incredibly creative that at the time I just became virtually glued to YouTube. And I think when I started watching more and more YouTube and more content, um, sorry, I guess there's a NASCAR competition going outside my house. I didn't realize I was living in the middle of a damn friggin' spin out spot. I'm literally not, I'm just so done. I need to live in the woods. But essentially I was extremely obsessed with YouTube to the point where already before I even graduated high school, I wanted to be a YouTuber. I didn't know how I was gonna make that work. I didn't know if it was even gonna happen, but that just gives you a little idea as to how long, now that I'm 26, that I've almost been on social media for 10 years. Like, I don't like those numbers. It's just a little much, you know what I mean? When you really think about it. So I spent so much time on social media. Obviously, if YouTube was my career and my my goal, like my, my dream, like that's all I ever wanted. Obviously, I have to be on social media. I have to have that presence. So I got to a place where I never, ever left cell reception. I was, I was on my phone 24 seven. And also because I did actually end up becoming a full-time YouTuber with all this effort and hard work put in. It's like the moment I was waking up, like, you know, and at the time I was staying up till like four in the morning, but like noon I'd wake up, I'd be on my phone instantly, going to bed on my phone. Like there was never a moment that I wasn't on my socials. Them flashbacks making me real nervous. Make me slightly uncomfortable thinking about all that screen time. I don't even think at that time I even had screen time. They didn't even have that on the iPhone yet. Am I old? Stop. I was also like, I was completely addicted to views, to likes. I never went outside. I never, experienced much of what life was like outside of my home. Like I've said previous episodes, <laughs> the previous two, I can be self-aware and I can look at it and go, yeah, you literally needed to go and sniff some fresh air and smell a flower, like go and realize that life is real. And I just never relaxed. And I think at the peak of my social media presence where I was probably uploading YouTube videos almost every single day, Instagram, pictures, stories, TikToks, everything, I was on there 
eight, nine hours every single day. And it's like I was a cockroach. Like you literally couldn't get rid of me. Me with my, at the time, bleach blonde hair and my crazy outfits. Like I was in your face, you couldn't get rid of me. So I started realizing that this very intense relationship that I had with social media was becoming very bad for me. And it was like, I was the byproduct of all of this time I would spend. So it's like, I wasn't eating well, I wasn't getting outside. I wasn't seeing the sunlight. Like I know I'm very pale naturally, but I do get my fair share of vitamin D. I do go outside quite often and that's now, but before I would barely ever go anywhere. I would never spend time with family or friends because it was sucking the life out of me. Like it was taking all I had and sticking in a little jar and going, everything you have is just these numbers. <laughs> like all you are is your follower numbers. Imagine that, imagine trading your life just to eat dinner, like literally, like I know that sounds so weird because people think like my like situation on YouTube is far different from other people's. And I don't think anybody who was a YouTuber has the same cookie cutter outcome. You know, you got people who, you know, listen to music like I did on YouTube and every single video was copywritten. So I put in all this effort just to make like practically minimum wage off my YouTube channel. Like it was always like, I was pushing so hard to get very little. There's people who have like easy times on YouTube, no problem, and they make a fortune, which God bless them. <laughs> that's dope, <laughs> like that's sick. I was getting tons of hate comments. It was really toxic. The place that I had created on my YouTube channel, like, and I mean, just anybody who amasses a bit of a following on social media, like you're obviously gonna have people that hate you, but like it's the death threats, it's the really mean things about my weight, like it's all of these things. And it's also the fact that I thought I needed to combat all of this negative attention <laughs> with really negative content. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't just be like, oh, I see this isn't really working. Like I'm gonna just switch over to something new. I'm gonna try something a little different. No, it was like, we're doubling down. We're putting on our bathing suit and we're gonna bathe an entire pool of cereal. And you guys think that I'm joking, but you know, for any of you guys that have been with me since like 2017, 2018, that that very much did happen. And you can probably find it on a Reddit somewhere, but I wish you didn't see that and I wish it didn't exist. But this is why I'm 26 and I'm the most learned version of myself. Um, tons of stuff to learn, tons of mistakes to make still. But now I can say like, after all that, wow, that's a huge, that's like, why would I wanna be there? I was even physically my most unhealthy. And I mean, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people who can have a social media career that do, you know, back then, I think back in like 2017, 2018, it maybe wasn't as common. Now I feel like everybody has some form of a social media presence or career, or that's where their business is, which is awesome. But for me, like it, it just, I didn't know how to manage it. I was also like 20. 21, so like I was the heaviest I'd ever been. I think I was about 20 or 30 pounds heavier than I am now. I would never eat breakfast. I would very seldom, I love that word. <laughs> like that was really good of me, like seldom. I very seldom worked out. Um, I would like just in general, only time that I would actually eat would be around dinner time. So I'd like fasted all day thinking that that was gonna give me the skinny vibe, but instead it actually just ended up making me eat terrible foods. So like, this is just bad. It's a recipe for disaster and that's what it was. So then I decided looking at my career and my lifestyle in general, that I really needed to rethink my entire life it, as a whole, it wasn't just my career, but I realized that what my work was had completely seeped into every single area of my life. It wasn't that, you know, oh, I have a really tough nine to five job, but I get to go home and be with my family. I could never just unhook and shut up. Like it was like all the time, like the antics were too much. This lifestyle was so not sustainable for me. And I know for a fact that social media was the leading source, the leading source of technology, the leading source in information. I knew it, I was like, it's you, like you're the problem. So at this point, I just had nothing to lose. I was like, you know, I couldn't be uglier. I couldn't be more unhappy. I couldn't be, like my hair was falling out. I bleached it so many times, just bad. Just look not, not good. And I just thought, let's just delete all these apps and let's go blank for a year. Like, let's just literally give ourselves time to not only rethink our entire lifestyle, but our career as well. And that was a very scary and daunting type of decision to make when social media for me was not <laughs> just for fun. Like, it wasn't like I was like, oh, like this is make a cute little video with my friends after high school. Like, no, it was my career um, for whatever money that I would make. And even then, like I was making a huge bet on the connection that I had built for many years with the people that supported my YouTube channel, any of my subscribers. Like that is like the weirdest thing to do. 
You don't just do that. You know what I mean? You don't just pick up and leave because then they're not going to trust you. You know what I mean? It's like I, I built so much of this connection because I wanted anybody that watched my channel to feel like they're my friend. I wanted them to feel like, you know, we're all kind of in this together and I'm making videos to please you. I, I want you, the viewer, to love what I make. And it's like for me to not even say, guys, I'm sick, I'm unhealthy, I'm unhappy, I'm gonna go and do something new, I just left. I like went blank on all my icon pictures. I deleted all of my apps off my phone and I logged out of all of my accounts. I didn't even know if I was gonna get hacked. Like that's another thing. You know, you build up a lot, like some subscribers and some followers and stuff. And you know, I had some pretty good passwords. At least I thought I did. My Twitter, no, it was my SoundCloud that got hacked once. That was pretty bad. But there is always that thought that like, you know, if you're checking in on your socials every day, you can see if something goes wrong. I just had no idea if something was gonna go wrong. I just, I just left. Now I wasn't just leaving to solely give myself a break from social media and to like regain my health and happiness, but it was actually an amazing opportunity for me to look at my career as a whole. And was I really inspired and happy with what I was doing? And the answer was no. If anything, instead of inspiring me, it was just draining me every single day. I was showing up making content for, like I said, my fans, like any of my subscribers, I would show up and I would do anything I could to make them happy. But that's another real big thing that I learned. Like it has to be a 50, 50, like you got to make content that your fans like, but you also also have to do stuff that you really like and that fulfills you. And I felt very unfulfilled. My cup wasn't even half empty. My cup was barren. <laughs> like my cup was like the damn desert. She was empty. And I just felt like nobody respected what I did. Like it, it didn't matter how much effort I'd put into a video. Um, it didn't matter how many views a video got. Like I even went, and you guys might've seen it before on my YouTube channel, or it was even on the Miami news. I went and I dressed up as Billie Eilish <laughs> and I walked around the mall and I caught like a crowd of like 60 people following me, like young girls screaming, girls that had Billie Eilish on their phone case, like literally screaming and chasing me. And I guess there was a part of me that wanted to make such good videos or such good content that people actually felt like I was, I was good at what I did or I was special or I was respected, but it was my own doing that put me in a position where I don't think people respected anything I did because I didn't really respect myself. It was honestly a lot of self-discovery and I've talked about this in many stories and live streams that like people get to screw up and make mistakes all throughout their 20s, even into their 30s. And a lot of times it's not documented, but for me, like being 19, 20, 21, making diss tracks about bad baby, like all that was documented. I can never run from it because there's a version of it that lives on the internet somewhere. One thing I knew that I loved is every single time I'd make a YouTube video, I was constantly using people's music because I was making reactions to music. Like that was my content was like, I want to talk about the new rap song, the new rap album. I want to talk about Post Malone because I was really into hip hop at the time. And it got to a point where obviously I was getting copywritten 24 seven. So I started making covers of songs to use in the back of my really good videos. And the whole purpose behind that was so that I could still continue to make money off of my videos that were completely like legit, fair use, good content, everything was filmed by me. It's just if I ever wanted to include somebody's song, they would take all of the revenue of my video. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna make some covers because I love singing and I've played the piano since I was eight. I think that would be really cool. And it just got to a point where I was like, I think in this time of me being off social media, I kind of want to become an artist. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> like, that was truly my thought process. Like that was the whole point. I'm gonna switch my YouTube career, do it a freaking 720, 180 backflip, kickflip, ollie off the side ramp, then pour hot sauce on it. Like that's literally what I was gonna do. And I was gonna come back a damn music artist. Like I'm nuts. <laughs> I am. Like I, I totally. You can say it because I agree. I'm. I lost my shit. But it inspired me. All of these artists that I would talk about, these rappers, these singers, that anybody that I would react to, and because I loved music so deeply, I wanted to be respected, and I wanted to create something that I was so proud of that I put my heart and soul into. And I know at this point it's like, okay, you're leaving social media not just for a break, but you're gonna completely 180 your career. It was a lot of stress now. It wasn't just a mental health leave. This was like full on, we gotta make it or break it. So I left all my social medias behind, went blank so that I could regain my strength as a person and become a musician <laughs> and, a, and a music artist and a writer and a singer and a producer. It was a really big risk. Yes, it was. Now. 
let's say we're talking two months in to my one year break. Leaving social media is a massive culture shock. Like imagine when you're in line to go get a coffee and you're like, mm, what do I want a matcha? Like, mm, what do I want like a latte? And then you can't just go and distract yourself by looking at other people on the internet. You have nothing to do. It's like we're back in the eighties. It's like, I gotta make small talk with the person behind me. And most of the time they're on their phone, person in front of you is on their phone. So you're just standing there with your hands in your pockets. And it's not like I was the type of person who deleted my socials, but had burner accounts. Like I completely wiped the apps. I didn't have any of the apps. So it was like when my friends would be like, oh, did you see like that? I don't know, so-and-so's outfit from their Instagram post. Or you see that new cute guy on TikTok? I was like, I do not know who you're talking about. What are you talking about? But holy shit. Yeah, I swore. I don't even care. It was the most incredibly freeing experience of my life because I felt like I was the only girl in the world gonna make me feel like I'm, I'm telling you, I felt like I was the only person that existed. Imagine that. I know that sounds so weird, but when you really think about the essence of what social media is, you are a click and a, a face ID away from viewing millions of people, one after the other, faces, different people, horrible atrocities that are going on in the world. You're watching hate comments, you're seeing weird videos, you're learning about new stuff, funny moments, like the list is literally endless and I didn't have that anymore. And to me, I really believe that it contributes 100% to your mood. I'm not saying that like, oh, you know, you're gonna be on social media for five minutes and then you're automatically gonna be really unhappy. But for some people, that's exactly what happens. For me personally, I had this massive discomfort in the comparison aspect of social media. Like seeing, oh, this person's absolutely popping off on YouTube or this person's getting so many likes or why did that person's video get this many views and mine only got this many views? Or why does that girl look so much prettier than me? When that just silenced itself, silence, when that silenced itself and it was gone, oh my God, guys, like, it's like you can look at your life from face value. You can actually see what life is like and feel really appreciative for what you have. And the beauty of how peaceful and calm and beautiful your life is. I'm clearly biased. Like you can hear it in my voice. I'm not trying to sell you some lifestyle because I don't care what you do, but I'm letting you know what I did. And I'm also letting you know that there was a beautiful benefit on the other side of the rainbow for me. And it's just you in your silence on your own. Even the beauty of like going to a restaurant with my boyfriend and sitting there and reading the menu. And oh, maybe he goes to the washroom, I don't have anybody to talk to. I'm just reading the menu. I'm just enjoying the ambiance, you know? They're playing a Michael Buble song. There's a nice little oil candle on the table. Look at all these wonderful things. I might even take a picture. Like that is just, there's an essence to life that you are missing out on when all you're thinking about is your phone and who the hell's watching your TikTok and who the hell's looking at your story. And so-and-so my situation ship is blah, 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 blah. Like there, it, I don't care, bro. Like it's literally just me, myself and I, and how am I going to better myself? And in the same breath, social media was my backbone. It was me personally, my ego. It was everything to me. It was my identity. It's like if I was gonna go to a house party, there was something about my social medias that as much as maybe it was completely subconscious, cause I feel like I didn't really care. I was just happy that I could make a living. But it's like, there was all of my friends who would be like, oh, so cool that you got so many followers. It's so cool that you spent so much time on YouTube and now you can make a living off it. Your subscribers, like your whatever. I didn't have that anymore. When you don't have the apps, like maybe it happened, but it doesn't feel like it's yours. All you are is you and what you have to offer as a person. It's like somehow that social media number makes you feel like you're worth something, like you worked for it, like you are somebody special in your own eyes. Just the same way as maybe you getting a your doctorate do they call that that? <laughs> your medical degree, <laughs> your PhD, <laughs> your freaking real estate license. Like maybe that degree or that diploma to you makes you feel worthy or that you're smart enough or that you're whatever. There's something, some science there. And I, I ain't no scientist. I ain't got no doctorate myself, but there's something to that that makes you feel whole. And it's very breezy, easy breezy, beautiful when you don't have that. Cause all you are is like a wisp in the wind. I am on one this episode, can't you guys tell? I really felt like I was starting at zero again, all honesty and like jokes aside. 
it's like I was starting from the very beginning and I got to leave that old person behind, that person that I wasn't proud of anymore, the person that was creating things that she wasn't proud of. And I got to be somebody new. And that was like super cool. And I could really focus on myself for once and not what everybody was thinking about me. So I used this time off social media to firstly get my health in order because she was struggling. Like I was, it was tough for me to breathe. Like working out was really tough. And like I said, I was quite a bit heavier than I am now. And I wasn't under any crazy expectation of myself to lose a ton of weight or to, it's just, I wanted to put myself first. I wanted to eat really well. I didn't want to be the last thing on my list like I used to. It was always like, you know, do the entire entire checklist and do everything until four in the morning and then eat dinner or like eat dinner at midnight or get four hours of sleep. It's like sleep, eating really well, decent foods, good foods, and also making sure that I was hitting the gym, doing sprints, working out, getting outside. And I did see really amazing progress. I think it's also because my head wasn't so clouded by looking at all these beautiful people on Instagram and thinking, why don't I look like that? I was the beautiful people that I see on Instagram because my screen was like the mirror. I'm like, I'm going to just put my makeup on. I'm going to do my workouts. I'm going to wear cute clothes and I'm going to do it for me and only me. And I want to look in the mirror and love what I see. And when you're your only competition, it makes it a lot easier and you're a lot more kind to yourself. That was another thing. It was always like, I had to be so extreme in all my decision making when I was younger. It's like, okay, you either are really, really, really skinny and you have to stick to this diet plan so hardcore or you let it all go to the shits. Like you just let it go to the, it doesn't even matter. Like it's gone. No, for me, like I was like, okay, you need some balance. <laughs> we don't need to be so irate and wild. I also began reading books. <laughs> That's nuts. Like, I know some people love reading, but at the time, I don't think I had read a book since like my high school English class, like un unless I had to read a book. So I decided I'd read a book a week for the entire year and I ended up doing exactly that. I never missed a book. I never missed a week. And I completed that. And there's just this really cool thing to books. <laughs> Bro, this is for, like, I feel dumb as hell right now talking about this. Like, I really feel like I'm nuts because these are all givens <laughs> for people. <laughs> Why is that such a funny word? There's water in this cup, I promise. There's no alcohol in here. I'm completely sober. I just want to let you guys know. I know, like, this is a typical on one factor that I'm on when I'm by myself. I just can't help myself. I just think I'm hilarious. It's like these are all given factors of life like that obviously reading a book is gonna be far more fulfilling than sitting and scrolling on your phone but when you have the easy option the way to procrastinate your life by just staring at a screen or hoping that life is going to change for you by watching some person on tiktok or like getting inspired to go like that dopamine hit when you hear that new song or you see that new tiktok trend and you're like oh i'm gonna go buy that new stanley because it's gonna give me that little hit of excitement and then i'm gonna be sad again like i wasn't about that i was healing from the inside out and the reading thing was sick <laughs> and like it's not even that I wasn't just using social media I wasn't on the tv I wasn't on the movies I was mostly just on the books and books are cool because you can create this whole fantasy <laughs> fantasy you can create this whole fantasy and this fun thing in your brain of what you're reading like there was one night Obviously, you know, a book a week, depending on how thick your books are and how thick your ass is, it can really kind of be a little tough. So there was one night that I was reading Charlotte's Web because I was like, that's a classic. And they don't always have to be intellectual, history, financial, better help, self-help type, not sponsored type content books. You can always read something like, oh, you know, a, a little kid's book. Or maybe you want to read a book that brings you back to your childhood. So I was reading Charlotte's Web one night in bed. And I was reading it a little bit before bed, so I'd read in the morning, read at night, and I was sitting there blubbering like a baby. I was like, who made this beautiful book? I love it. I had not felt that strength in my soul in a long time. That's literature. <laughs> Like you, you can find everything you need through books. And obviously I'd still use Google. I'd still use the computer. I wasn't completely primitive. I wasn't like log cabin vibes, but I was doing my best to be that. And then I learned how to make music. <laughs> so morning, wake up, read for an hour, workout, shower, lunch, breakfast. I was still on the fasting thing, but we don't do that anymore. Um, lunch. And then I started to learn how to make music. This was like my new job. So if I was going to come back and make anybody that watched me or subscribed to me actually enjoy my music or be proud of my attempt, I really needed to work hard at it. And it was something that 
I wanted to be dedicated to. It's like, if you're going to make this big step, not only did I obviously want to learn and I wanted to come back having a greater knowledge of life and, you know, being able to manage my time on social media better, but I wanted to prove to myself that I could really do something, learn something. And so I learned to write music, produce music, play the guitar, partially begin learning how to play the piano again in about a year. And so when I ended up coming back to YouTube, just to end off the story about when I actually did return, I did begin the process of putting out my very first and only album that I released. And I'm All Alone was the very first song. I was just proud and happy to let myself be really shit at something because nobody was watching. Like, that's always the thing. It's like, okay, if I want to try something new or if I want to put music out or if I want to whatever, and we're trying to keep that ball rolling on social media constantly, like people are going to watch you be ass at it. And I'm so happy you guys never heard my very first songs that I wrote, my very first demos. <laughs> but I even gave myself to find music that I had never listened to before. I got really into 90s grunge, got in metal, got into stuff that I never thought I'd like. My dad and I really connect on our music tastes now. I don't just listen to hip hop. And I got fully inspired without any distractions, without anybody telling me what they thought of me or my body or my look. I even did this weird thing. This was also like side quest, but I did my hair hot pink before I left social media, like hot, hot pink. And I let it grow out all the way until I put my very first song out and returned back to YouTube. I think I had the growth out to my ears. It was wild. I just, I was disheveled, but it didn't matter because I was just home enjoying my life off of all social platforms. I used to be so busy that I never listened to music. So just having that time by myself to appreciate songwriting and to learn something new and sink my teeth into something that I'd never done before. Again, though I had kind of discovered totally different opinion on music after I started putting music out, I just felt like a kid again. And I, it's like I got to start completely fresh. I got to like rebirth myself essentially. And I don't know how many people get to have that opportunity. And now this is probably like my third or fourth time rebirthing myself at 26 and like kind of wild, but I think it's the best thing for you to like actually look at yourself and look at your life and realize what it is that you like, what you don't like and what you wanna change. There are far too many people and I know from experience and I know from people in my life that go to work or start a job or you know for me it was social media and you hate it there's a part of you that hates it or you dread it but because it puts food on the table you can't leave so for me the fact that i was able to get up and leave and try something new was so cool and so freeing oh it was the best i lived off my savings for the entire year in case anybody's wondering how i financially made that work i blanked out my whole channel so i wasn't even making money off of my old youtube videos i was just living off my savings account <laughs> maybe not the most financially smart thing but when you're like 22 23 you're like <laughs> i could die tomorrow <laughs> so a year goes by and like i said i came back to social media with this incredible sense of accomplishment and happiness for the life that i got to live for the past 365 days and the excitement to share this amazing new version of myself and this project that i had been working on the entire year with my first song obviously coming out and I that was like the coolest thing ever. I'd never made a music video before, made a music video, another tale for another time. So I just wanna make a little disclaimer that not every person's break or rebirth back into social media might be as transformative as mine. I don't know if it would be for you. Like for me, social media was my everything. It was my only thing. There are a lot of people who are able to do their work and have a little social media on the side and that's super cool too, so that's totally fine. But it was a very empowering, exciting experience for me. And I would recommend it to anybody that asks. My subscribers and my followers and anybody that was still around to welcome me back to social media after the time that I took strictly for myself, they were so appreciative and so kind and so welcoming. And for anybody who just deuced out of my social media because I left, that is completely fine. I think a lot of people don't understand what it's like to be on the other side when you're constantly creating content. And there are so many people who take long breaks, who leave their YouTube channel, who can't make that commitment. And for anybody that was there to actually understand why I took my break, which again, this was probably one of the more in-depth explanations I've ever given regarding this topic. Like you guys are the best, but mostly everybody was extremely kind about it. I now felt like with this social media break, I could continue on my journey, being myself, being who I am, 
and being truly the best version of myself that I could be. And there are so many amazing things that I learned in the process. I truly believe for me that it is next to impossible to be a part of social media in any way and not allow it to compel you, to buy you, to sell you, to hold you, to have you like, Social media plays this very intriguing role in all of our lives. Some people are able to hold it at an arm's length and not allow it to control them. But for me, I have to be very careful with how much social media I consume. And if you don't allow it to do that to you, you have to be extremely disciplined. And if you're somebody like that, I give you complete kudos and love because that's wild. I started to realize the influence that social media, even streaming platforms, new movies, all of these things really have on us as individuals. Because it almost feels like if you're not in the loop, Loop, and you're not involved with the latest trends, the latest songs, you're not buying the latest clothes, you're not really cool. Like you can't really play a part in that current conversation because you're not buying in to the social media aspect of it, the influencing of it. And for some people, that feeling of being not included or not in the loop can be really difficult. But I came back to social media being almost a little too far the other way where I couldn't care less what most people think of me. If you dislike me, if you like my content, if you don't like my content, I'm gonna show up and do what I wanna do for me always. That was like another thing I learned. I can't sit here and make content to please people behind a camera on another side of the screen, on the other side of the world, just so that I can make a dollar or just so that I can feel as if I have accomplished something. No, instead, I have to do what really makes me happy. And for anybody, the few of you, for all of you, whoever comes and actually wants to sit here and listen to me and watch me or be a part of my content, I will love you forever, but I can't live my life based on anybody else because I know for a fact that I'm gonna end up in that same dark hole that I was back in 2019. I'm also just not as worried or concerned about views or likes or who's showing up to my page. I'm not ruining lifelong relationships of mine now to just upload a video. I used to live my life on this edge where I would have a plan to go out and see my grandparents, but because I didn't finish all my content, I wasn't actually gonna go and see them. I just canceled last minute. Or like a family gathering. Like I started to realize that the relationships that are real, that I can physically see with my eyes, means so much more to me than me showing up and performing for a screen or for a camera. And I also learned that a life without social media, and like I said, I'm clearly biased because I took an entire year off, but an entire year off of social media taught me that life without it can be so much more enriching. We get to live in this alternative universe where it's just us, right? It's just you, it's just me, and there's nobody else out there as far as the eye can see. Us and our families and our partners are all that we have, and it is all that truly matters. Those comments and those views and the people on the other side, how do I know that the people on the other side of the screen that I'm so obsessed with their lives on TikTok where I'm following, I see their children, how do I know they're even real? How do I even know that they live where they say that they live? Like, how am I going to become so connected and so attached to social media accounts, to influencers, to celebrities that are not here? What is here? is all that we can see and all that we can touch and all that is tangible. And that is what made me realize like, this is all that we have. And to waste what is right in front of us in order to appease and show off or even just create for the sake of somebody that is across the world, like it, I don't function like that anymore. I used to, I used to allow myself to be completely consumed by what people thought of me, how I could get those views, how I could get somebody to show up on my video. And I would sacrifice and waste all of my current relationships that are right in front of my eyes in order to appease and show off and give content to people that I don't even know where they are. I don't even know their names. Like that is not life to me anymore. I didn't want to be obsessed with the screen anymore. I didn't want to be obsessed with a life that I wasn't experiencing for myself. And I think that's the way that social media really grabs us. And it's that thief that is comparison. It's the thief of joy. It's what all of us say. It's because when you start seeing that that girl's face is so gorgeous, her body is amazing, that family looks so happy, they're going on vacation, why can't I? If that's not there, there's just you and me. There's just this. And how beautiful is this? It's really being able to be grateful for everything you have. And if you can look at social media through a lens that is positive, 
then pop off like good for you that's super cool and I love that and I do my best every single day and any time that I consume social media now I use it as a beautiful source of inspiration I use it as a little getaway from what I'm going on going through in my life just to enjoy and see what other people are doing to just look and see you know videos that I might want to try and create it's it's like a beautiful place for art and creativity but it can also be really dark if you yourself are not happy and you yourself are not content and I think it was this beautiful storm that made me so unhappy with my career and my life and that's why I would recommend for so many of you guys if you feel like you're kind of in this weird mental space if you kind of feel unhappy if you kind of feel like why does everybody have it going on and I don't have it going on put the phone down, put me down, put all this away, log out, just leave it alone. I actually think it would be really good. And you don't have to do it as extreme as I did for a year. But if you went and you left for a month, two months, a couple weeks, you can help recreate these patterns and these routines in your life. Or when you do go back to social media, you can look at it from a really subjective spot. You don't have to feel as if you're so emotionally connected to it that you're that it's really bringing you down. Cause it's like when you're already down and then you're looking at other stuff, it can really kick you. I'm just so happy that I can sit and I can look at my life and my family and my boyfriend and the place that I get to live and the freedoms that I get to have. And I can just be appreciative and grateful for everything that I am because I'm not completely sucked into believing that there's something better out there. I think you should do it. If you've been listening to this, contemplating leaving social media, give give a hug and a kiss to your followers or your story members or your the group on Facebook where you guys talk about your new car. I don't know. Give it a give it a rest. Lay it down. Put it to sleep for Christmas. Enjoy your family time. Come back January first better than ever. Whoop whoop. New Year's resolution, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I love you guys and I only ever come on here to share these kind of things on podcasts because I feel like I've been very quiet on my social medias for many years now, ever since before when I left social media in 2019. I haven't had this openness where I just sit and talk to you guys and share my opinions and share my life experience because I just have been shy. I just feel like I'm not good enough. And who created that idea? Me thinking that there's people that are so much better than me, that are so much better looking than me, that are so much funnier than I am, it's just not true. And I wanna share my opinions and all of the things that I've experienced, hopefully so that you guys don't make mistakes like me, but also that maybe I can teach you something and share something with you. And I really hope that I did that today because I do recommend taking some time off social media and really reflecting on your life and even (laughs) using it to become a cooler person. Like, instead of being this like half-baked, person who's like have you seen the newest trend maybe you can be somebody who is really into medieval lore like maybe you're really into cool metal or you play instruments or maybe you travel like use your time so much more wisely and when you're really old and you look back I promise you're going to be happier for it thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast or watching the podcast I really really appreciate it please make sure that you leave me a comment down below and let me know what topics you guys would like me to cover next if there's any stories anything specific that you want me to talk about any things going on in the world that you'd like me to talk about bro I'm down for whatever so let me know down below I love you guys thank you for your time and I will see you very soon bye (laughs) god damn I'm out of breath